Hello there, everyone. If you're watching this video, then you are part of the TTOR army, an army that is building itself up one subscriber at a time. A couple months ago, I was in a live stream with Brett Keane and Cindy Lincoln and Veckel and I think one or two other people. And in this particular live stream, Cindy Lincoln was talking about all the things about Kent Hovind that she was exposing on her YouTube channel. And she was telling us about the Kent Hovind, Chris Jones situation. And she even provided uh, links in the private chat of our room, taking us to audio recordings of Kent Hovind talking to people about the Chris Jones situation, including Chris Jones himself. And she also provided links to other people's YouTube videos talking about the same thing. I took all those links that she gave me and I looked over them and I did some additional research of my own and after looking into the Kent Hovind, Chris Jones situation at the request of Cindy as well as Brett, if you remember that live stream, if not and it's still up on YouTube, you can go look at it, but I was asked to look at it by the party of the room I was in, specifically by Cindy. So I did my due diligence, and as you can see from the thumbnail and title of the video, the due diligence led me to the conclusion that Kent Hovind is an enabler of pedophiles, and more specifically is trying to cover up for his pedo friend, Chris Jones. And more specifically, he's trying to censor people on the internet who dare to speak out against that. I have seen Brett Keane's recent videos on his channel where he had Kent Hovind come on and basically offer up his side of the story and throw all kinds of accusations at Cindy Lincoln. And it is looking at these videos, especially the more recent ones, where Kent Hovind basically threatened a lawsuit and arrest towards Cindy Lincoln for daring to publish audio recordings of Kent Hovind's phone calls on her channel to prove that Kent Hovind is the lying grifter and the charlatan that he is. And so in order to prevent Kent Hovind from threatening me with a lawsuit or threatening me with arrest or threatening a false flag campaign on my YouTube channel in order to get it taken down, I have to point out something that's pretty obvious. I have to point out why Kent Hovind cannot threaten me with a lawsuit or get me arrested for posting the audio recordings of him that allegedly were recorded illegally here in my video. The reason why I can publish those recordings in my video and analyze them and respond to them is because a 2001 U.S. Supreme Court ruling in a case called Bartnicki v. Vopper says that I can publish illegally obtained materials in my video as long as I am not the one who obtained the material illegally, which I am not. And in case you don't believe me on this, I'd like to direct your attention to this article that came out in 2014 on the Student Press Law Center website. The article is titled, Learning from the Headlines, Gizmodo and Illegally Obtained Materials. And when you go to the background section, this is where we find the relevant parts. There are two issues presented by the Gizmodo case. The first is whether police can legally seize evidence that journalists obtained while working on a story. The second is whether it was legitimate for Gizmodo to publish information from a source who did not have the legal right to sell the iPhone. We skip down. As to the second issue, it is generally legal for journalists to publish material that their sources have obtained illegally as long as the journalists themselves did not break the law. This issue came up in a 2001 U.S. Supreme Court ruling in a case called Bartnicki v. Vopper. In the Bartnicki case, a Pennsylvania radio talk show host broadcast a recording of a phone conversation in which the head of a teacher's union made harsh comments critical of local school board members. The conversation had been recorded illegally in violation of federal privacy laws, but the court ruled 6-3 to three that the illegality did not matter. The information was truthful and newsworthy, and the station had a constitutionally protected right to broadcast it, even though the source who provided the tape may have violated federal law. 
So according to the U.S. Supreme Court of the United States, I'm allowed to publish and respond to these recordings of Kent Hovind's phone calls with various people, even though they were potentially, allegedly, recorded illegally. The U.S. Supreme Court gives me this protection, so... To Kent Hovind and all of his posse who might be watching this video and thinking that you're just going to be able to threaten me with a lawsuit or threaten me with arrest or threaten to do a false flag campaign to get my video or channel taken down on YouTube, you better think twice about it, people. U.S. Supreme Court 21 years ago said that I have no liability for these illegal recordings, assuming they were illegally recorded. I can publish and respond to them to my heart's content. The U.S. Supreme Court gives me the legal protection to do so. So don't even think about threatening me with any kind of lawsuit or arrest or whatever. Whatever you're thinking about threatening me with, don't even try. It's not going to work. It's not going to fly. It's not going to go anywhere. In addition to the fact that the U.S. Supreme Court 21 years ago said that I have the legal right to publish and make responses to these audio recordings of Kent Hovind that you're about to hear in this video, there's an additional reason why Kent Hovind really shouldn't be threatening me with a lawsuit or trying to get me arrested or trying to get me taken down from social media over publishing this recordings. It's because Kent Hovind not only doesn't deny that he said the things that he said in the recordings you'll hear later, but he claimed that he is not ashamed of what he said in the recordings and that what he said in the recordings is not a big deal. And in case you don't believe me about what Kent Hovind said, I would like to direct your attention to this YouTube video on Brett Keen's channel titled Kent Hovind Exposes Cindy Lincoln, moderated by Brett Keen. The video already has 2,500 views, which is good for Brett, but it is at the 2 minute and 47 second mark of this video where we hear Kent Hovind say the following. But she left bugging devices in our house and in my van and recorded conversation. Now, there's nothing in there that I'm ashamed of, and she thinks it's a big deal, you know, but it's not. So, according to Kent Hovind, all of these audio recordings of him that I'm going to be sharing with you in this video, well, according to Kent Hovind, as you heard him say plainly, he's not ashamed of what he said in these recordings, and these recordings aren't a big deal like she thinks they are. So Kent Hovind is not ashamed of any of the audio recordings you're going to hear of him later in this video. He also says that these recordings are not a big deal. Well, when you see some of the vile, disturbing, and outright disgusting stuff that Kent Hovind does in these audio recordings, it's going to make his statement in this video all the more horrifying. One thing I'd also like to point out before we go any further is that if Kent Hovind and his posse do start a false flag campaign against me and they succeed in getting this video taken down off of YouTube or they succeed in getting this YouTube channel taken down, I literally don't care. And the reason why I don't care is actually twofold. One, I have channels on many different video sharing sites on the internet. So if it gets removed from YouTube, it doesn't matter because I have this same video on at least five or six different channels on other video sharing sites. So even if Kent Hovind and his posse do a false flag campaign against me and they get this video or my channel taken off of YouTube... I literally don't care. It doesn't matter. It's up on a whole bunch of other sites, and I'm still going to get the word out about who Kent Hovind really is. The other reason why it doesn't matter if my video here gets taken down or if my channel gets taken off of YouTube is because I am literally in the process of building my own YouTube alternative called Quarter, and when this bad boy is ready to be unveiled to the public, it's going to be better than YouTube. It's going to have all the things you like about YouTube and none of the bad things you hate about YouTube. It's going to be awesome. So between that and all the other video sharing sites I upload my videos to anyway, I could care less what happens to my YouTube channel. I really could. And so now that we know that Kent Hovind has no standing to threaten me with a lawsuit or threaten me with arrest, and he has no standing to legitimately get me struck down from social media, 
let's go into the actual subject matter of the video. I have here on screen Kent Hovind's, I think, first interview on Brett Keane's channel as far as the whole Cindy Lincoln saga goes. It's called Kent Hovind Defense versus Cindy Lincoln Accusations, Brett Keane God TV radio show. And it is at the 37 minute and 47 second mark of this video where we see Kent Hovind say the following about the whole Chris Jones situation. All right, one of the other things, and I, I know this is kind of irritating, and I don't even know who these people are that are being accused. I've never been down there again for people who do not realize this, but she's accused uh, people of doing drugs on the property. She's accused someone of being a pedophile. I'm not sure I even recall. I think it's some person named Brady or something. Um, but do you know anything about this? Because I know nothing about it except for what is being claimed. I one, one at a time. I cannot hear you. Uh, okay. Um, there are uh, all kinds of people come here. We don't do a background check. People come to visit. Do, does Disney do a background check on everybody that visits Disney? You know, does Walmart do a background check before you walk in the door? No. We're open for the public. We're a Christian ministry. We're a camp. We have a science center that Damien runs, 12,000 square feet of cool science activity. People come and go all the time. Now, if somebody's going to come stay here for a while, then yes, we scrutinize them. But some people come for come through or stop and say hi. I've known people for a long time. The whole thing with Chris blows my mind. Chris Jones had been a longtime friend of mine, uh, probably 30 years. I used to fly all over the world. I, I preached many dozens, maybe even scores of times in uh, California. Well, Chris had a job driving a stretch limo, <clears throat> a big old you know, stretch limo. That was his job. He was a chauffeur. So when I'd show up at the airport, he'd pick me up and take me to the church. I'd say, Chris, my love offering is going to be zero. They're going to think I'm some kind of rich, rich movie star. He just did it as, for free as a gift to me. because he, So we were good friends. Chris was living with a family that had three, two, I forget. He can tell you the story himself. I'll, I'll have him on the program sometime. But um, he wanted, the, it's a long story, but he ended up getting charged with, uh, in California, they're real strict. He was playing strip poker with the, the boys to teach one of them a lesson. They asked him to be the dealer, and he rejected it for a long time. Finally, he said, okay. He got, they got the kid, one kid that was really picking on the new, new, new boy that was a little retarded, and they were picking on him. And so he got him down to his underwear and said, Chris, said, that's it, let's go. Much later, they accused him, because Chris was very active in uh, publishing stuff, exposing what's going on, New World Order kind of thing. And so they arrested him for, um, what do they call it? Uh, anyway, he now has to register as a sex offender. Uh, for the people that he lived with for three years. The boys are now well-grown and are probably going to testify that nothing happened and he's going to get this overturned. Meanwhile, he comes through here once in a while and, uh, and we're, we're friends. We're still friends. And he's welcome here anytime, okay? He's not a sex offender. But he did nothing wrong. But she's going to use that and say there's pedophiles there. He's not a pedophile. And uh, yes, he's welcome here anytime. If that's what she's talking about. All right. Let me let me try to put a question out there that I haven't even heard anyone uh, attempt to even try. If you knew for a fact that someone was harming children or any of the residents at your uh, at dinosaur land and all that, you would you instantly put them out? Would there be some kind of ministry uh, discussion about this i mean how would things go down let's say right now you prove without a doubt somebody did something terrible what would happen to that person oh they'd be asked to leave in a heartbeat we've asked who'd we asked to leave last week so in that clip that you just saw Kent Hovind claims that even though Chris Jones is a registered sex offender he claims that Chris Jones is not actually a sex offender well if he's not really one why is he registered as one? Usually to get registered as one, you have to be convicted of doing something that would get you that situation. Kent also claims that Chris Jones is not a pedo, even though he admitted right in this clip we saw that Chris Jones played strip poker with a bunch of kids. He claims that Chris Jones was doing it as a way to teach one of the boys a lesson because one of the boys was picking on one of the other boys, but... Uh, if you're trying to teach children a lesson for picking on others, the last thing that a normal person would think to do is make all those kids play strip poker. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I certainly would never think to do that if I was thinking, you know, 
This kid over here is being really mean to the others in his group, and he needs to be taught a lesson. The last thing I would think of is, ah, make the whole group play strip poker. That'll show him. No, that's not how normal people think. That's how a pedo thinks, and uh, as you're going to see here in a bit, there's more to the story than what Kent is telling you. Kent then says that Chris Jones is welcome to come to DAL anytime he wants. And as we heard there at the very end, Kent also claims that if someone at DAL sexually abuses children or, you know, does the kind of stuff that Chris Jones has done, that they would be cast out of DAL in a heartbeat. And as you're going to see later on in this video, Kent Hovind's lying when he says this. Now, as far as the truth about Chris Jones goes, it's actually pretty simple. Why is Chris Jones a registered sex offender? To answer this question, we have to turn to the uh, case from 2008 that went all the way up through to the end of 2009 in appeals. The case is called The People vs. Jones. And what we see in the opening of the opinion by the judge is that Chris Jones challenges his convictions for committing lewd acts on children under the age of 14 and battery. And then you read in the next paragraph that the defendant, Chris Jones, uh, he made numerous contentions that were without merit and basically everything was done properly as far as the trial goes. But in order for you guys to understand what a sick freak Kent Hovind is protecting here and lying to you about, let's just read the factual allegations section. The charges against defendant arise from allegations involving different children over several years. Oh, and by the way, um, if the disclaimer at the beginning of the video didn't convince you, uh, you definitely don't want anyone under the age of 18 to hear this part, so bear with me. These allegations are presented here in rough chronological order, not in the numerical order of the counts. Defendant was convicted of offenses arising from some incidents, but acquitted of offenses arising from others. J.B. Defendant taught Sunday school at a, Yor at a Yorba Linda church. He befriended the family of two of his Sunday school students, J.B., age 7, and Z.B., age 6. After church one day in 2001, defendant drove the two boys to a restaurant in the park where JB got mud on his clothes. Defendant took the boys to their house so JB could change his clothes. Defendant and boys went to JB's room and JB got undressed. While JB was naked, defendant put him over his lap and hit him on his buttocks. Mm hmm. Barf bags ready. A. L and T.S. defendant befriended A.L. age 10 and T.S. age 11 who were staying with his neighbors during the summer of 2003. The two boys and some friends visited defendant to watch boxing. Defendant had the boys bit on each round of the fight with the losers required to run around their underwear. Two of the friends stripped down to their underwear. A.L. started to pull down his pants but stopped halfway because it felt kind of weird. Yeah, no kidding. Defendant would take A.L. for rides in the limousine he drove for a living. One time, defendant told A.L. to pull down his pants. A.L. pulled down his pants and underwear down to his knees, exposing his... Well, you can certainly read that there. Defendant looked down at A.L.'s waist area and placed his hand on A.L.'s thigh. During another limousine ride, defendant played true for dare of A.L. and T.S. Defendant dared A.L. to show him his underwear, which A.L. did. A.L. and T.S. once ran into defendant at a county fair where the boys and some friends had watched a hyp hypnotist. Defendant later claimed he could hypnotize the boys. He tried to hypnotize A.L. into taking off his clothes. A.L. stripped down until he was naked. A.L. and some friends visited defendant, finding pornographic magazines in his bedroom. They looked at the magazines while defendant watched another time. A.L. Oh while defendant watched. Another time, A.L. and T.S. looked at pornographic magazines in defendant's bedroom while he showered. A.L. and T.S. also visited defendant at his parents' home, where defendant showed them pornographic videos and pictures of naked women on the computer. Alex M., Anthony M., and E.G. Defendant lived with a friend and his two sons, Alex M., age 11, and Anthony M., not age 9. Defendant would get the boys ready for school while their father was at work. The friend dated and eventually married a woman who had a son, E.G., age 12. One time, defendant showed pornographic pictures on the computer to Alex M. Another time, defendant woke up Alex M. and asked him, 
Would you sleep with me for a couple hours? I'll let you play video games on the computer. Alex M. went to sleep next to defendant in defendant's bed. Defendant also took naked pictures of Anthony M. and E.G. One day in 2004, defendant drove the three boys to his parents' home to play in the pool and watch the movie Gladiator. Defendant told them that before they watched the movie, they had to play strip poker. Defendant produced a deck of cards and explained the game to the boys. He dealt the cards, told the boys who won or lost each hand, and directed the losers to take off some clothes. The boys did as instructed. Alex M. remembered he and Anthony M. stripped down to their underwear. Anthony M. remembered only himself getting naked. E.G. remembered the other two boys stripped him naked and took off their own shirts. During the game, E.G. noticed defendant's dick was getting larger and you could see it through his pants. And so, if you made it through that entire clip without vomiting in a barf bag, congratulations, you have a stomach of steel, because that is some pretty sick, heinous stuff that we're looking at right there. But this is what Chris Jones did a couple decades ago. This is the guy that Kent Hovind wants you to believe did nothing wrong. He's completely innocent. They just went after him and... uh, charged him with this stuff because he was exposing the New World Order. And so, because Chris Jones was convicted for committing lewd acts on children under the age of 14, he had to register as a sex offender in South Carolina, which you can see right here on the screen. But I'm not going to scroll down all the way, so that way you don't see certain information about him that I'm not allowed to show you legally as far as I'm aware. But anyone who looks this up can see the whole page for themselves. So, as we have seen already in the video, Kent Hovind has admitted that Chris Jones has come to DAL on more than one occasion in the last few years. But what Kent Hovind doesn't tell you is that Ernie Land warned him prior to Chris Jones's visits to DAL that he could potentially get Chris Jones arrested if Chris Jones were to show up on the DAL campus where a bunch of uh, children and their families were present. And in case you don't believe me, I'm going to go ahead and play the audio recording for you guys. We're going to stop at points along the way so that I can make the commentary that I need to make. And without any further ado, let's get that going. So, as we could hear there in the first 24 seconds of the video, Ernie Land warns Kent that people will use Kent's association with convicted pedo Chris Jones against Ken's ministry. Let's keep listening to the recording, though. So what is the, yeah, the Christian perspective, Chris is my friend. I knew him before this happened. And, you know, Saul was out killing people, and after he got saved, some of the church probably didn't want to accept him in there. I mean, I feel it's a similar thing here, you know. So, as we saw in that clip, Kent Hovind responded to Ernie Land by saying that Chris Jones is his friend, and that Chris was his friend before Chris got convicted of being a pedo. And Kent points out that churches want nothing to do with Chris and that some people in DAL feel the same way. Let's keep listening, though. And I understand what you're saying, but they, again, the, the law will be used against you when Chris shows up. And that's why those with children, they have to exercise, you know, they have to kind of exercise some caution and kind of stay away from him and act, act as if... Uh, So, as we could see in that clip, 
Ernie Land responds by saying that allowing Chris Jones on the DAL campus will allow people to use the laws of the land against Kent's ministry, and that the parents on DAL were going to exercise caution. Ernie then tells Kent that there is nothing wrong with Kent having fellowship with Chris off campus. Ernie then warns that if Kent brings Chris onto the DAL campus for fellowship, it is illegal for Chris to be there, and Chris could be arrested. Now, let's listen to the next little bit. Um, I, I don't think so, but maybe we can do some checking on that. Oh, if he's going to move here and live here, yes. But to come visit? To come visit, he can't even be around the school, bro. If he's around where children are, and a non-location of children is a convicted pedophile, he's in violation of his uh, his rules. What he was left with when he was set free. So, Kent responds by saying that while it might be illegal for Chris to live on DAL or move to DAL, there isn't anything wrong with Chris visiting the DAL campus. Ernie rightly responds by pointing out that Chris visiting the DAL campus would violate his probation rules, and he even points out that if Chris were to even show up on the campus of an elementary school, he would immediately be arrested. And so he points out to Kent that if he comes to the DAL campus, he could suffer the same consequence, because when you're a convicted pedo, you're not allowed to be anywhere where children are. Them's the rules, Kent. But let's listen to the next little clip here. Well, do you want to call him and talk to him about that? Make sure? I, don't, I really don't need to. I mean, it's going to be him that they go after if, 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 it, if they come catch him around where children are. And, brother, if they catch him traveling with children, it's going to be a real issue for him. I don't know. It's evil what they've done to that guy. So, as we could see in that clip, Kent responds by asking Ernie if Ernie wants to call law enforcement and make sure that Chris visiting DAL uh, would or would not be a violation of his uh, probation. Ernie responds that he doesn't really need to, and he reiterates that if Chris is caught being around children at DAL, it's going to be an issue for Chris. Kent responds by saying, I don't know, it's evil. So think about this, guys. Kent Hovind knows that Chris Jones is a convicted pedo. He knows that Chris Jones is registered as a sex offender. He knows that if he brings Chris Jones to DAL, he not only is putting a temptation in front of Chris Jones as far as uh, reoffending goes, but he's also potentially causing Chris Jones to violate the rules of his probation. And Kent doesn't care. Kent is really such a self-centered narcissist that it's his way or the highway. And if he says someone who's not allowed to be around children can be around children at DAL, well then, by golly, Kent Hovind's going to make it happen no matter what. Not only is this incredibly narcissistic on Kent's part, but it also shows that he really doesn't value Chris Jones as a friend very much. I mean, if Kent Hovind was a real man of God, and if he was really Chris Jones's friend... He would not ever bring Chris Jones to DAL where all these children are. He would not want to put a temptation in front of Chris Jones, and he wouldn't want to cause concern with the families that are living there with their children. If Kent Hovind was the real man of God that he portrays himself to be, he would take all of these things into consideration, and if he associates with Chris Jones at all, it will be far away from the DAL campus and far away from wherever children are. The fact that Kent Hovind insisted that Chris come to DAL and he's come to DAL multiple times, well, that kind of shows you that Kent Hovind really isn't a very good friend to Chris Jones, much less a good man. So at this point, we know that Kent Hovind knew that Chris Jones was a convicted pedo. We know that Kent Hovind knows that Chris Jones is a registered sex offender. 
Kent Hovind knows that Chris coming to DAL could lead to some serious uh, legal issues for himself and for Chris Jones. And yet he insisted on Chris Jones coming to DAL. We know that this happened for sure because when you go to YouTube, you find this video on Mark Stoney's YouTube channel titled Kent Hovind and the Dinosaur Adventureland Crew Meet with Chris Jones, January 13th, 2021. This video is nearly two hours long, so I'm not going to actually watch it here in this video, but I'll have the link to it in the description box below in case you guys want to see it for yourself. And basically what this two-hour video is, is Kent Hovind and Chris Jones in DAL together, sitting down with DAL staff and ministry staff and addressing the concerns of having Chris Jones there on the campus. So we know for a fact that Chris Jones was brought to DAL after Kent was warned that this could result in the arrest of Chris Jones and legal issues for his ministry by Ernie Land. Kent went against this uh, advice and decided Chris Jones is going to come there because I say so. But there's more than just the fact that Chris Jones was brought to DAL. The fact that Chris Jones was at DAL where children were isn't the sole reason why Kent Hovind is trying to cover up the whole Chris Jones situation. It's the fact that Chris Jones was actually busted sleeping with a 13-year-old in a bed on DAL campus. And in case you don't believe me, I got the evidence in the form of an audio recording. Now, in this particular audio recording, we are going to see Paul Hansen tell Kent Hovind that Chris Jones was caught in bed with a 13-year-old boy. And with that being said, let's go ahead and let's just play that entire clip. So is Chris gone? Well, you know, I disagree with Chris theologically on several things, and we, but, but that doesn't, he's, he's allowed to go where he wants. What, I don't, I'm still baffled by the, by the whole, uh... I mean, Chris, Chris, uh, like you said, Mark, you're going to be a Chris, so he said, uh, or, or that's when I read it anyway, he said, uh, you know, Chris was sleeping in a bed with a boy, you know, when he was down here last time. And I, I, I take him back. Well, Chris called the mother, and he'd known the family for a long time, and the boy was kind of, re well, still, it's not our decision to make. I, you know, that's not our, I would, I would probably do the same, and you would probably do the same if a 13-year-old kid is scared and said, hey, can I? I'm not without a child molester, and there was a, <laughs> there was a I, 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 was, I was right beside him with my RV. I could have seen him. He should have brought me in if they called. Uh, he wants to sleep in the same room with us. He got some mat. Got, I, I have some mattresses put out, and he should have been just fine, not being in the same bed. Yeah, that was just really, really dumb. Yeah. Really dumb. Judge my call, but anyway. So, as you heard in that particular audio clip. After being told by the DAL staff, Paul Hansen, that Chris Jones was caught in bed with a 13-year-old boy, Kent Hovind made excuses for and tried to justify Chris Jones' behavior, which contradicts the claim that Kent Hovind made on Brett's channel not too long ago when he claimed that anyone who was caught doing stuff like that would be immediately cast out of the ministry. So Chris Jones literally is caught in bed with a 13-year-old boy as a registered sex offender and a convicted pedo, and instead of casting Chris Jones off of campus like Kent says that he would, instead Kent Hovind attempts to justify Chris Jones's behavior, and not only does he not kick Chris Jones off of campus immediately, to this day, he says that Chris Jones is welcome on the DAL campus whenever he wants to come, even though he was busted sleeping in a bed with a 13-year-old. Holy smokes! If this doesn't prove that Kent Hovind is a massive hypocrite and a gigantic liar, I don't know what does. Because Kent Hovind claims that if someone were caught sleeping in bed with a minor as an adult, 
that they would immediately be thrown off of the DAL campus. And yet when Chris Jones does it, Kent Hovind makes excuses for him. He covers for him. He invites him back to campus. Sure, bud, bud, just come whenever you want. You're not guilty of anything. And by the way, you're going to see it later when we listen to an actual phone call between Kent Hovind and Chris Jones. He literally tells Chris Jones that he's not guilty of anything. So now at this particular point in the video, we're going to be listening to the phone conversation that Kent Hovind had with Chris Jones regarding Chris Jones's recent visit to the DAL campus at the time of the call. And we're just going to go ahead and start listening right now. I, well, that's not why I arrested. Uh, Jesus fulfilled my Sabbath, but go ahead. Uh, uh, hey, second thing is, uh, I got a sentence for one study today. Oh, good. Because uh, I guess it was my young time. It's my fault? What, what, what's it mean by that? Uh, Brother, I, I, I refuse to take any blame for him leaving at all. It's a mistake. He shouldn't have left. He's going to regret it one day, but okay. So, as we heard in that particular clip, Kent Hovind confirms that Chris Jones came onto the DAL campus, and Kent thinks that it's unfair for people to hold Chris's status as a convicted pedo and registered sex offender against him. Well, when he's caught sleeping with a 13-year-old boy in a bed on DAL campus, um, that whole fairness thing just goes right out the window, Kent. But anyway, let's listen to some more of this clip here. I, I, you, from my perspective, just come. Uh, I had a wild idea. You ready for this? You can do it as somebody anonymous. Okay. Write write a comment on the YouTube channel or something. Pick a new name that says your name. Uh, or just send it in as an email to the office. Uh, Cindy has been divorced twice before, and so she's unqualified to be in the ministry. I mean, really lay it on thick. This is exactly what they're doing to you. Talking to your wife, This My wife, yeah. No, my wife. No, my wife, Cindy. No, I'm going to leave your wife now. I'm going to leave your wife. But I will leave your wife now. Well, just to point out that how this is so dumb to keep an albatross around somebody's neck for years. That's exactly what they're doing to you. You've turned turn it exactly around on them and say, I'm not going to come to that ministry until all those who've been divorced are gone. They're not qualified to be in the ministry. I don't want, I don't want my children to be around them. You know, pretend like you got a bunch of family, children or something. So, as we saw in that clip, Kent's response to this unfairness regarding Chris Jones is to start an online bullying campaign against his wife at the time, Cindy Lincoln, in order to justify kicking her out of the ministry. Kent specifically instructs Chris Jones to create a new account on YouTube and to leave a comment on Kent's channel saying that because Cindy Lincoln had been divorced twice prior to marrying Kent, she was disqualified from doing ministry and that they refused to come back to DAL until all people who have been divorced are kicked out of the ministry. 
There are a lot of things wrong with this clip we just saw, but let's start in the first place we need to. By his own standard, Kent Hovind himself is disqualified from his own ministry because he divorced Joe Hovind and Mary before he married Cindy. So in order for Kent to avoid being a hypocrite in this matter, he should just hand the DAL ministry off to Matt Powell and retire. Because if he's going to start saying that, oh yeah, people who've been divorced are disqualified from the ministry, Kent has to be the first one to go. He's been divorced too, just like Cindy. So if Cindy has to go because she's been divorced, Kent Hovind has to go too. And the fact that he would not offer to retire first and hand the ministry off to someone else in order to be intellectually consistent proves that Kent Hovind is a raging, raging hypocrite. This is absolutely disgusting, the level of hypocrisy that Kent Hovind is willing to stoop to in order to silence Cindy Lincoln. Notice, too, how even though Kent Hovind tried to get Chris Jones to help him start an online bullying campaign against Cindy Lincoln in order to kick her out of the ministry, notice how Chris Jones refused to partake in that. You would have thought the roles would be reversed. You would have thought that Chris Jones would be the one saying, yeah, man, your wife needs to leave the ministry because she's been divorced and she's not going along with this cover-up of me being here. And you would have thought Kent would be the one saying, no, no, she's my wife. I love her. We just, we can't do an online bullying campaign against her just because she doesn't agree with you being here, brother. But Kent doesn't do that. Instead, Kent's the one trying to start the online bullying campaign against his own wife. And it's Chris Jones, the convicted pedo and the registered sex offender, who says, nah, I don't want to partake in that. Kent Hovind is so twisted and evil that even Chris Jones can't go along with this. Think that one over, ladies and gentlemen. Kent Hovind starting a internet campaign against his wife at the time, Cindy, in order to justify kicking her out of the ministry, not only proves that Kent is a narcissist, but it also proves that Kent lied when he said that he loved Cindy and was a good husband to her when they were married. Now, in case you don't believe me that Kent Hovind claims that he loved his wife and was a good husband to her, I'd like to redirect your attention back to this video from earlier, Kent Hovind exposes Cindy Lincoln, moderated by Brett Keane, and is at the 559 mark of this video where we see Kent Hovind claim the following. This woman is a liar. She will freely steal from other people like this by fraud. And I just think it's sad. So I'd like, I can't talk to her or communicate with her, but somebody, look, I loved her. She was my wife. She was a great blessing here. I was a good husband. <laughs> yeah, sure you loved your wife. Sure you were a good husband to her. Because everybody knows, everybody knows that a good husband starts an online bullying campaign against his own wife when she refuses to participate in covering up the fact that a registered sex offender and convicted pedo was allowed on the DAL campus where a bunch of minors under the age of 14 were. Sure, you were just a good loving husband when you decided to do that to her. Weren't you, Kent? To all the married Christian men out there and the married Christian women out there who may be watching this video, I just have to ask this important question. Does a Christian man who loves his wife go behind her back to start an online campaign against her in order to justify kicking her out of his ministry? Does a Christian man who loves his wife really do that? Pretty sure the answer is no, but hey, let me know in the comments section below if you can find a biblical justification for doing that. And in regards to Kent Hovind trying to uh, start an online bullying campaign against his former wife Cindy back when they were married and telling Chris to leave comments on his YouTube channel and YouTube videos saying all this stuff, I'd like to point out this obvious thing here regarding that. Those of us in the alternative media and the independent content creator community recognize that when someone tries to start an online bully campaign against a content creator for the purpose of deplatforming them from their job, their organization, or their social media accounts in order to stop them from speaking out against the ones starting the campaign 
we would rightly recognize that such a person is trying to censor and silence the person who is the victim of the bully campaign. And this is exactly what Kent Hovind was trying to do with Chris Jones. And this is also what Kent Hovind was trying to do with Cindy Lincoln by calling out for a false flag campaign against her YouTube channel in order to get it taken down. And in case you guys don't believe me, we're going back to the video that we just saw a clip from, the Kent Hovind exposes Cindy Lincoln video on Brett's channel. And it is at the 8 minute 35 second mark of this video where we see the following. But I don't know if you realize this or not, by, but according to the terms of service and community guidelines on YouTube, she's not supposed to be posting any kind of documents or personal crap or anything like that. People are not allowed to use the internet as a, it's called cyber stalking. Have you heard of this? I just heard the term, and but that's certainly what she's doing. And everybody needs to contact YouTube and say, shut her account down. Stop. She's not going to quit unless she's forced to quit. It's sad. So we see right there, Kent Hovind literally calling for Cindy Lincoln's YouTube channel and all her videos to get taken down because she's putting out all these audio recordings of me that expose me for the lying charlatan that I am, and I just can't handle it, so... We just need to get all that stuff to disappear off of YouTube. Just disappear. Make it go away, guys. False flag her channel so that all her videos get taken down. And the thing that especially confuses me about Kent Hovind calling for Cindy Lincoln's YouTube channel to get taken down because of all the audio recordings of him that she's posted, the thing that confuses me is we've already seen in this video Kent Hovind say that he's not ashamed of the things that he said in those audio recordings and that they're not even a big deal. Well, if you're not ashamed of what you said in the recordings and they're not a big deal, well then, why are you trying to get her censored? The fact of the matter, Kent, is that the reason why you're trying to get Cindy Lincoln's content removed from YouTube is because you're afraid of her. You're afraid of the spotlight and the magnifying glass and the mirror that she's holding up to you and showing everyone who you really are. That's why you're trying to get her banned from the internet. Now, I've been to Cindy's channel. I've watched some of her videos, and she is not a cyber stalker like you and Brett say that she is. She is trying to show the world who you really are, and the only way to prove it is to provide evidence. And that's what those audio recordings do. They support her claims about who you really are. She is not attacking you based on your innate characteristics or on some kind of petty personal level that has nothing to do with the content of your character or your behavior or your worldview or whatever. She's merely exposing the fact that you're a lying grifter who uses Jesus and God and the Bible and young earth creationism in order to build a cult of personality around yourself and for your own personal gain and benefit, and that you're not at all who you portray yourself as online. There is nothing about that that fits the description of a cyber stalker. She is trying to make the world aware of who you really are. And considering that she was married to you for a period of time, um, I think she's qualified to reveal things about you that other people aren't. Anywho, let's return to the phone call between Kent Hovind and Chris Jones. And let's look at the last clip of the conversation that I wanted to share in this video with you guys. Yeah. Oh, enjoy it. Well, now, who, who's, who contacted uh, Beatty about you being here? Uh, I, I contacted Brady and talked about it. Not, not Brady, uh, ba uh, Robert oh, Beatty. Oh, I have no idea. Does he know? I have no I, idea. I, guess, I think Ernie told me that, I think Ernie was the one that told me that Beatty had something, and somebody had told him about people leaving the ministry over this, and Beatty's got it all up on his stuff. I mean, I don't care what Beatty thinks, but... Uh, well, it really sucks. It's funny, you know, they ask me, why would you come on this ministry knowing your additional hurt? And, uh, well, first of all, that too many if I if it was later in the day and not so in the morning, my answer would have been, well, look, all of our sins are stained on the reputation of Jesus, and yet we're all, uh, we all come there, and he welcomes us and loves us. I think this ministry, uh, more than a lot of others, does emulate that. Should have been my answer, but uh, but uh, where was I going with that? The um, I forgot that I have my 
how did how did baby find out? And who who's telling him this stuff? Oh, mom is yeah. You obviously still have rats in your ministry that tell Dio stuff and baby stuff and you know. And that's the thing. The other point of this is the same people that accuse me. Why would I hurt the ministry? They even turn around and call Dio and baby. It's crazy. Well, I don't care what Dio thinks or baby thinks, but uh, I, don't care, I care what God thinks, and I think you. I wonder how long the Apostle Paul had to put up with this church of saying, oh, this is the guy that used to murder Christians. I mean, he, he, in that case, he was guilty. <laughs> You're not guilty of anything. So, as we saw in that clip, Chris Jones complains that a bunch of people in DAL are leaking out that he was on campus. Kent responds by comparing Chris Jones to the Apostle Paul and then claims that Chris isn't guilty of anything. I'd like to point out that since Chris Jones was busted sleeping in a bed with a 13-year-old boy who has since gone missing, it makes sense that Chris would be upset that members of DAL are leaking out to various people on the internet that, Chris, that he was on the DAL campus. So I understand why Chris Jones isn't happy about that. But Kent's claim that Chris isn't guilty of anything not only is a lie that enables Chris's urges and behaviors, but it contradicts Kent's more recent claim that Chris Jones initiated a strip poker game with a bunch of minors in order to teach one of them a lesson for picking on another minor in the group. You see, that strip poker game? Yeah, Chris initiated that. And that's not normal behavior, to put it lightly. As I explained earlier in the video, normal people, when they want to teach a a child a lesson like that, a child who's under the age of 14, forcing them and their friends to do a strip poker game with you is not exactly the way that they would want to teach a child a lesson, to say the least. It's not something a normal person would do. It's not something that a non-pedo would do. Now, it is something that a pedo would do, hence why Chris Jones was convicted of committing lewd acts on a minor. Now, in conclusion, I would like to point out what the facts of the Kent Hovind Chris Jones situation are. The facts are as follows. Kent Hovind knew that Chris Jones was a convicted pedo and registered sex offender, and he brought Chris Jones to DAL more than once, even though Ernie Land warned him that bringing Jones to DAL could be a violation of Jones's probation and result in Jones getting arrested. We also know that on one of Chris Jones's visits to DAL, he was busted sleeping in a bed of a 13-year-old boy, but Kent Hovind tried to justify Jones's behavior, and he continues to invite Jones back to DAL whenever he wants to this day, even though he got busted in bed of a minor. We also know that Kent Hovind tried to get Chris Jones to help start an online bullying campaign against Cindy Lincoln, who was Kent's wife at the time, in order to justify kicking her out of the ministry because she wouldn't go along with the cover-up of the Chris Jones situation, among other things as well. Kent Hovind is not only a liar and a hypocrite, but he is also an enabler of pedophiles, just like Kenny Rhodes in his enabling of Smoky Saint's past behavior. One thing I would like to make clear to the online Christian community is that if we are going to condemn Kenny Rhodes for enabling pedos like Smokey Saint, then we must be consistent and we must condemn Kent Hovind for doing the exact same thing with Chris Jones. If we condemn Kenny Rhodes for enabling the pedophile Smokey Saint, but then we give Kent Hovind a free pass even though he's doing the exact same thing that Kenny Rhodes is, well then, we're not being consistent, we're not displaying integrity or honesty, we're not being good Christians. I know that Kent Hovind has far more charisma and has a far more winsome and attractive personality than Kenny Rhodes does, but that doesn't matter. He enables pedos just like Kenny Rhodes does, so we have to treat him in the exact same way that we treat Kenny Rhodes. Now, does any of the wickedness that Kent Hovind has displayed in this video, does any of that surprise me? The answer to that question is no. 
The reason why this does not surprise me is because back in 2015, right before he got out of prison, Kent Hovind went on to Lone Star 1776 YouTube channel and he taught that repentance is not a salvation issue and that repentance is a work that man does after he's saved. I refuted this heresy back in 2019 in my video titled, Kent Hovind Teaches That Repentance Is Not Part of Salvation. I backed this video up to my Joshua TV channel four months ago, but I had it up on BitChute back in 2019, back when I, you know, made it. And as my reward for exposing Kent Hovind's heretical teaching, the creationism group on MeWe that I was in kicked me out of the group for criticizing Kent Hovind, which I discuss in detail. Creationism group on MeWe kicks me out for criticizing Kent Hovind. Links to these videos will be in the description box below. So I already knew prior to this whole Kent Hovind, Chris Jones situation awareness that was brought to me that Kent Hovind was an unsaved heretic and I already knew that there was a cult of personality around Kent Hovind. So when I saw all of the stuff that he's done over the last several years in terms of getting out of prison and building a new DAL and then divorcing his wife of many decades shortly after and then getting married to three different women, basically changing out wives like NASCAR drivers swap out tires on a race. Uh, I knew Kent Hovind was an unsaved man and everything he's done since he's gotten out of prison has only cemented that belief. He does not display any fruits that of a saved person. He definitely, though, displays the fruits of a hypocritical, lying grifter and spiritual narcissist who enables pedophiles. And so, that was the point of making this video today. Now, I know for a lot of you guys watching this video, some of you may not even be aware of all the horrible things that Kent Hovind has been participating in and has been doing over the last seven years since he got out of prison. But don't be alarmed. Just because Kent Hovind is a diabolical dirtbag and an unsaved person masquerading as a lamb of God doesn't mean that the biblical worldview is false or that Jesus is not true or that the gospel isn't true or that young earth creationism isn't true. None of that stuff is dependent upon Kent Hovind. So don't let this disturbing truth about Kent Hovind dissuade you from believing in the biblical worldview. I would implore you to read your Bibles for yourself and accept the straightforward contextual reading of your Bible. I would encourage you to pray. I would encourage you to find Christians who are not lying grifters and spiritual narcissists and enablers of pedophiles and talk to them about this stuff and see what their thoughts are. That's what I would encourage you to do. Do not put all of your hopes and dreams of being a Christian into Kent Hovind. A lot of people have already, and they've gotten burned really badly once they find out who he really is. And I don't want any of you guys watching this to fall into that trap. I was lucky in that seven years ago, when I saw Kent Hovind uh, teach this heresy, my devotion to the biblical worldview is way stronger than my devotion to any one man. So when I saw Kent Hovind teach this heresy, I immediately recognized who he was and I cast him out of my life and I no longer considered him to be an authority on young earth creationism or any kind of authority in the young earth creationism movement. So yes, do not let Kent Hovind's wickedness dissuade you from belief in the biblical worldview.